everybody knows it's Nerdbugger here and welcome to a brand new decade here on the channel, here in the world. It's 2020 and it's going to be a great year for comics and I know that because I work at a comic store and I've already seen previews of what's coming out so it's very exciting but you know what else is exciting? Last year's comics, 2019. Today's the day we announced the big banana in the sky, the comic of the year, the one that I enjoyed the most and there's a little bit of everything. This year, as usual, as you guys know, I read a little bit of everything. So we've got some all ages, some manga, some original graphic novels, some superheroes. It's literally, I think they're all very different, which is cool, yeah? Uh, this year was the year of single issues for me when it shouldn't have been. Been trying to save to buy a house. Then I got sidetracked because they announced House of X, Powers of X. And I got even more excited about X-Men, as you guys know. Can you see that in the background? This has just grown my Marvel Legends action figures and such. That's fine. Uh... I love X-Men. I got too excited so I started adding more and more single issues like Harley and Ivy mini-series and but, but, but I just added more and more and more and now um, my to read pile, ooh, I mean if you're a comic reader your pile probably looks like this but this is not the norm for me. There's too much to catch up on which I'm not happy about. There's some amazing Spider-Man in there. I don't dig 2099 stories, just not my jam so I haven't really read those yet. Farmhand, that's a great book. It's not in my top five but it's really good. Uh, if you enjoy kind of monster, monster books. Anyway, I've got off track. I've had a great time reading comics. I hope you had a great time reading comics. Disclaimer, I don't read every comic that comes out every year because I don't have the time to. I talk about all the comics because I work at a comic store, but I have time to read them all. So, if your favourite comic of the year isn't here, don't get all angry. Just be like, hey man, this is the comic I enjoyed in the comments down below and tell me about it. And then maybe I'll read it and maybe I'll enjoy it. So, that's what's up. Here are my top five comics for 2019 in the lead up to number one, The Big Banana in the Sky. Why do we say Big Banana in the Sky? Just go back and watch four years ago. It'll make, actually it won't make sense anyway. That's fine. Number five is Bloom by Kevin Panetta and Savannah Ganesho by First Second Books. So straight away you're gonna go, Kaz, isn't that Savannah that used to appear in your videos and is totally great and fantastic and super talented and one of your bestest friends and you really miss them and wish that they'd move back here so you can hang out all the time and watch them draw while you're sitting on the couch? Yes it is. It is that person but it's not a biased opinion. It really is a wonderful, wonderful comic. It's had great accolades already and it brings me so much joy that a book my friend created with their friend is doing so well. Isn't that fantastic? It's a LGBTQI plus romance comic about Ari who works in his family's bakery. You think of it, he wants to be a cool dude, he wants to move to the city, be a musician, wear cool leather jackets and be a tough boy in the city as a musician. But his dad says it's a really bad time, he really needs help, uh, there's a lot of work to do at the bakery. So they hire a new fellow whose name is Hector and this is where the fun begins. Hector has a passion for baking and as someone that's married to a patisserie chef, these are the scenes that I loved the most. The illustrations of Hector making the food and also the flashbacks to Ari's parents creating phyllo pastry. That's my favourite double page as they're spreading out the pastry is just breathtaking. It makes you so incredibly hungry. I would recommend <laughs> that you guys either have something like from a patisserie to eat while you're reading it and a nice little cup of coffee or eat beforehand because you are going to get so hungry reading this. It's a delightful book. It shows a new kind of romance, a blossoming romance, which is always so lovely to read. I also really enjoyed all the illustrations of plants and it just feels fresh and clean. And that color palette of just being that pale blue is just lovely. It's quite popular to do at the moment in original graphic novels. And I just loved it. I loved the way it was done. So. Congratulations to both Kevin and Savannah. I'm so proud of you and it makes me so happy that this was actually one of my favorite books of the year. I'm not being biased. Please trust me. Check out this book, Bloom. You're gonna love it, especially if you love sweet, sweet romances while being surrounded by sweets. Number four is Wonder Twins by Stephen Byrne and Mark Russell. Now, no one ever says, you know who my favorite DC character is? Is the Wonder Twins, except maybe back in the 70s when the cartoon was a thing. But nowadays, no one really says their favorite character is the Wonder Twins until now. Maybe because of this book, people will start loving them again. <laughs> Zen and Jaina are so much fun to follow. It's a comedic book. It comes from Wonder Comics, which is like a sub company of DC. It's got Naomi in it and Dial H for Hero. Both been doing really well, but this is by far my favorite. 
and I picked this up in single issues because I love Steven's art. I always have. Uh, I really like how cartoonish it looks and we all know, I say this every year, that I love facial expressions. Anything that is a clear facial expression and often comedic is something I'm going to enjoy. So I really enjoy Steven's art and I enjoyed this comic so, so much. Uh, Zan and Jaina <laughs> were exiled from their home planet. Their home planet is also weirdly sexy. So it's an all ages comic from issue two, but issue one, you'd have to have like that awkward conversation with the younger person because all the adults in their world get it on a bit. It doesn't show anything, but you're well aware as an adult. Anyway, going off track. So they leave there and now they go to South Metropolis High School and they're trying to blend in with everyday kids, but you know, they can transform into water and are superheroes. So it's a little bit hard for them. They also intern at the Hall of Justice and hang out with Superman and Wonder Woman a lot. And they never get the accolades that they should when they save the day. Really, they all kind of make fun of them, which is pretty much what people do. Remember when they used to make fun of Aquaman? <laughs> Not anymore. It was just nice to see a comedic book coming out of DC when everything is so doom and gloom and serious all the time. It's kind of a little bit different for them and it just worked really, really well. So if you're someone that enjoys comedic books and superheroes, and also, I forgot to mention, my favorite character in one of my favorite teams of all time, The League of Annoyance, because he can't do any other team, the League of Annoyance, which also includes a character called Drunkula, who when he drinks too much blood, he's drunk. Uh, and the Scrambler, who's my favorite character of the year out of all the books I read, the Scrambler. Someone that uh, switches minds with people, scrambles minds. But also, their outfit, their criminal outfit, is like a yellow onesie with a sunny side egg sunny side up egg on it and I just found that amusing and he's constantly making puns and I love puns and I just love the scrambler so I just wanted to add that in. <laughs> At number three it's Powers of X and House of X by Jonathan Hickman and Pepe Larraz. When they announced that Hickman was doing a reshuffling of X-Men, restructuring, restarting of X-Men, I was concerned, not because I don't like Jonathan Hickman as a person and I thought he was going to do a bad job, that's not the fact there. The fact is, I just don't like his writing. He has too grand an idea, they're always so epic and huge and very hard to follow, but people love it. East to West is one of the highest selling comics for that reason. People can't help but get invested in characters. He puts so much thought into things, but that's just not my jam, usually. But with House of X and Powers of X, he just did exactly what someone needed to do. This guy is so smart, right? And all I can imagine is him at a dinner party while he was coming up with this concept of joining together all the years of X-Men, you know, decades of a book, all the history and creating a whole new start while referencing all that history. And he'd be at this dinner party and they'd be like, on the weekend my kid went and we played cricket and we had a good time and then he's like, well, I'm writing this X-Men book, right? And this person's gonna talk to this person and this happened 20 years ago and then this person time travels and this. Can you just imagine that? Me trying to explain House of X and Powers of X support to you would make no sense. No sense at all. You would have to read this and just invest in it and enjoy it. And the best thing about it was that there were people at my work, we all read it. It's like one of the only books that all the staff at the comic store read. It's very rare. We all have very different tastes. We all read it and enjoyed it. Some of us have really, you know, immense knowledge of X-Men. Some of us don't and had just, you know, kind of watched the movies and a bit of the cartoon. But we were all able to understand it to some level. You could dive as deep into this as you want. And that was really fun coming into work the next day and being like, what are they referencing here? What's happening? And having a conversation. It was like the most excited we'd been for a comic in forever. Forever! And he did such a good job. They banged it out of the park. I loved the art. I also love this character, this new character. I can't explain this to you, you're going to have to read it, but this is Rasputin IV. This is my Stephanie Hahn variant cover of issue one. I just wanted to show it to you because it's real pretty. And I really love this character. Uh, and yeah, I hope you'll check out House of X and Powers of X. If you're an X-Men fan, you don't want to miss it. It sounds like it's crazy and it's overwhelming, but as someone that really doesn't dig Hickman, I was able to follow it all the way through. Absolutely loved it. Loved seeing all this history come together and it was always a surprise. The ending was a surprise and it's just been a delight ever since. I'm reading so many X-Men books in single issues because I'm just too excited. Uh, I'm reading New Mutants, the new Wolverine that's coming out, Marauders. I think the only two I'm not reading is X-Force and Excaliburs. 
out of all the new X-Men books. God, I'm trash. If it's got the word X-Men on it, I'll buy it. I'm a Hero, Volume 11 by Kengo Hanazawa. Yes, my number two pick is the final volume in this zombie epic. It has been such a wild ride. And let me tell you, you think it's just a normal zombie book, right, at the start? I mean, with incredible art and great storytelling, but where you end up in this omnibus by the end, I couldn't even explain it to you. I could not tell you or spoil it. It would make it would make no sense. To, like, you would have no idea what I'm talking about. So I highly recommend it if you enjoy really well-illustrated manga. It's incredibly violent, it's incredibly gory, and it's incredibly well-drawn. So if you like seeing gore and crazy zombies and monsters, this book will just fill you with so much happiness and sadness and worry and dread and all the emotions. You get so attached to the lead character, even though he really is not the greatest person. His name's Hideo. He's a failing manga artist. He's not doing great. Nobody really reads his books anymore. You know, he's not, you know, not really relevant. And uh, you keep hoping throughout these volumes that he'll become a better person, this amazing hero. I am a hero, that's the whole idea. But he really just goes along and tries to survive. He's just doing the best he can in a crazy world. He makes some terrible decisions, some great decisions. And ultimately it leads to this, to this volume of a manga. If you enjoy zombie manga or horror manga, this is right up there. Forget about Walking Dead, just read this. It's, it's fresh. It's exciting, and I cannot explain enough that you would have no idea where it ends up. What a, what a journey it has been. And I was so excited for these that I would come home and I just wouldn't function. I just had to read it from start to finish. I couldn't put it down. I would read this chunky thing in one sitting. Couldn't stop. And then I'd have to go back and look at the art because it's so beautiful and incredible and detailed. And you, you're just in for such a wild ride. Please pick it up. It's 11 volumes and then you're done. Chunky, fun, good times, monsters, gore, incredible art, incredible storytelling. What more do you want? The time has come, people. It's time to announce the big banana in the sky. The number one comic of the year is a comic that moved me in a way no comic ever has. I saw myself in the pages and it made me so happy to know that younger generations can read this and know that they're okay, that everything's gonna be okay. It's Guts by Raina Telgemeier. A few years ago I found out that I suffer from anxiety and I always thought that I was a crazy person. I mean I'm crazy in other ways, but I really did think I was crazy. And my whole life I had all these crazy symptoms, like I go to restaurants, I get so stressed about not being able to finish my meal because I was full that I would get ill. I would have to go to the bathroom and sit there dry retching because I felt bad that my family paid for this food and I couldn't finish it. Or when I was trying to go to America with my mum on a holiday and I got so ill, so ill from the stress two weeks before they thought I had bowel cancer because they couldn't explain it. I had to get an ultrasound on my stomach because I really thought I had bowel cancer or something. So these symptoms, these crazy thoughts you have, uh, all these people hate me, people hate me, and I'm like, what are you talking about? These people don't hate you, but in your mind you think that. And it was horrible, it was horrible until they figured out what was going on. I'm not a crazy person. I just have this issue in my life and I work every day at trying to overcome it and keep going with things and realizing that it's just your brain and your body reacting. It's fine, you're fine. That's what this book is about. Raina talks about the symptoms and follows the story of, I believe it's her, because the character is called Raina, uh, as she goes through the symptoms of anxiety. Uh, she herself also has problems with food and particular foods that make her feel sick and stressed and, you know, friendships and things like that, the stress of change. It's just so relatable for me and anyone that suffers from anxiety and anyone that thinks they may be suffering from anxiety and they don't know it yet, read this book. It doesn't matter your age. This is such an important book. She does such important work and I'm just so happy this book exists. It's going to change lives. It's going to help kids. It's going to help people and it's just such a good read. It's such a good read. I cried at the end of it and I was talking to Liam about seeing myself reflected so clearly in a book. The symptoms were exactly the same and it just... What a life-changing book, right? That's my number one pick, my big banana in the sky for 2019. And now I want to hear from you guys. What books 
Did you love this year? Let me know in the comments down below. Let's start a chat. I'll pop in and blah, 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 have a chat to you guys. Also, tell me what the worst book you read is in the comments down below. I'm not going to do it here on the video, but I'll tell you if someone tells me their least favorite in the comments down below or comment. So keep an eye down there for that. Uh, also, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for being here and watching all these videos. It's crazy to think this will be, this will go into our seventh year on YouTube making videos. We have an epic thing planned, planned, planned. I got too excited. Uh, an epic project that we've been working on for months. Liam and I are making videos together. I'm trying to film every single week again because I miss it, and it's you know good to concentrate on this while we try to buy a house. So hopefully you'll be seeing me every week. It'll be all different subjects: comics, horror movies. Uh, toys, vintage stuff, outfits, being a goober, all that. So you'll be seeing a lot more of me. I'll be seeing a lot more of you. Thank you for your support. I love you guys. And I'll see you guys next week. <laughs> Bye.